geometry. We are starting a new topic today in math, geometry. So with geometry is going to come a lot of vocabulary. I know it's going to be a little tricky, but I promise we'll practice it a couple times. So today, we're going to be looking at some of the vocabulary words here. We have a plane shape. A plane shape is a shape on a flat surface. It's formed by points that make curve, paths, line segments, or both. So plane shapes are really just basically the normal shapes that we think about. Um, you know, like, I know that these are um, human forms of the shapes, but these are the shapes that we're thinking about here, you know. We have um, a hexagon here, we have a rectangle, we have a triangle, we have a trapezoid. You know, these are some examples of plane shapes. Now, a point is this little dot. It's an exact position or location. A point is just literally a dot on a line. Now, we know a line is a straight path, and it continues in both directions. It does not end. That's what these arrows mean over here, is that no matter what, the line's going to keep going and going and going and going. It has no end. Now, when you put two points on a line, they're called endpoints. See, there's one point here, and there's one point here. These are called endpoints. They're used to show a segment or a part of a line. So we have the endpoints over here. Then we have a line segment which is this piece of the line. It's straight, it's only one part, and it has two endpoints. So we have a plane shape, which is a shape on a flat surface, like we talked about circles, rectangles, squares, triangles. We have a point, which is a little dot on a line. We have a line that goes on forever. We have endpoints that have little dots. And then we have line segment, which is just that part of the line. Okay, it's not the whole line. Now, the last one that we need to talk about is array. Array is also straight. It's part of a line. You have one point, it goes straight, and it continues off in the other directions. So unlike a line segment that has two points, this has one point, and it goes on and on and on. You know, when I think of the word ray, I think of a sun. A sun is going to have rays that start at the point or the middle of the sun, and they're going to go on and on and on and on forever. Okay, now that we went over the vocabulary, let's go back and think about what the question was here that we were looking at. It says an architect draws plans for a house, store, offices, and other buildings. Look at the shapes in the drawing to the right. So this is the shape of what the architect drew. Okay. He drew a regular building like we normally would see. And if you notice, there are going to be some line segments here. You got some endpoints and points. Okay, so let's think about what they're going to ask us now. It says some shapes are made by connecting line segments at their endpoints. One example is a square. We're going to describe how it, square using math words. So these vocabulary words that you're learning as a third grader are going to help you when you're explaining your thinking because you're going to be expected to use them to describe your shape. So here we have our square. We know a square already has four sides and four corners. Similarly, we can describe them now with different words. We know instead of saying four sides, we can say they have four line segments. So this square has four line segments, or four sides. And then instead of saying four corners, we can say that this shape has four endpoints. Again, this is another math vocabulary word that we can add to our thinking. So down here it says a square has four line segments, and the line segments meet at their endpoints. Now again, thinking about this, it's another way to say that it has, a square has four sides, the line segments meet at their corners. But using new math vocabulary as a smart third grader, you're going to be saying they have four line segments and the line segments meet at their endpoints. 
Now, I know we, before we mentioned plane shapes. Again, we talked about squares, rectangles, all these different things. Now, plane shapes have lengths and widths, but no thickness, so they're called two-dimensional, meaning they lay flat on a surface. These are things that you draw. Now, we're going to look at the difference between a closed shape and an open shape. You're probably used to only seeing closed shapes. That's really what we mostly look at. A closed shape starts and ends at the same endpoint. So what that means is all of these are closed shapes because none of the sides are open. Now on this side, we're going to look at other shapes that could be considered closed. Here's one example. This is a trapezoid. Here's another example. Now notice a closed shape can also have rounded edges. It doesn't have to be just straight lines. It can have rounded edges. And here's another closed shape. Reminder, closed shapes have to start and end at the same endpoint. Now, when we're looking at open shapes, what, you, what do you notice about something that's different here? When I look at them, I notice what's different is, is that none of them connect or stop and make a whole shape. It's kind of like they're all open. So it doesn't start and end at the same endpoint. So over here, if we were to draw or show other shapes that would ha be considered a closed shape, they would look something like this. This shape over here that I'm bringing in is considered an open shape. It's open because it's just, you know, a line that goes around but doesn't actually connect and finish off the shape, okay? So if we're looking at the question down here, it's saying, is this plain shape at the right a closed shape or an open shape? We know that the shape to the right has to be a closed shape because unlike the open shapes that we have up top here, if you notice, it starts and ends at one endpoint. A quick way to check this is to pick a corner or an endpoint, trace around the shape, and see if you can get all the way around until the corner that you stopped at, uh, started at or endpoint. Okay, now we're going to look at some other examples and go through the vocabulary again and practice together. Number one, it says write how many line segments the shape has. Well remember, line segments means sides, so we're going to count the sides together. One, two, three. So we know that this triangle has three line segments. So this triangle has three line segments, and that's what we write down here, it's three line segments. Now we have to describe what we have over here using some of the vocabulary that we've been working on. Now, we know that this first one has to be a ray. We know this because a ray has one endpoint and then goes on forever in the other direction, just like the ray of sun that we spoke about. If we look at the number three, it says we have to figure out if it's an open or a closed shape. To figure that out, remember I said, start at an endpoint and go around. See if you can touch the other end, the same endpoint that you started with. This shape you can. We know that because you can do that, it has to be a closed shape. Let's see number four. Start at this endpoint, go around, around, around. Uh oh. We do not stop at the same endpoint. Because of that, the shape has to be open. And this last one, hmm. I'm noticing that I have a straight line. I'm noticing there are points on each side, which we call endpoints. That means that this has to be a line segment because a line would go on forever. A line segment just stops. Now, when we look at the, one, the shapes at the bottom over here, again, we have to figure out if they're closed or open. Start at an endpoint, work your way around. Oh, this one we didn't end at the same endpoint, so we know that it has to be open. Oh, here, we don't have a corner, so you're going to pick a spot. Go all the way around. Oh, look, it ended at the same endpoint, so it has to be closed. Let's try this one. Start over at this corner, go all the way around. Look, you ended at the same endpoint. 
that means it also has to be closed. And let's look at this last shape. Hmm. Go around all the way. Nope. It was closed, but we still didn't get to the same endpoint. So this shape also has to be open. Look carefully over questions six through nine. Look at how this shape is open. This one is closed. This one is closed. This one is open. Remember, use your endpoints to help you figure out what where they go. Okay, now we're looking at the total number of line segments. To look at the total number of line segments, we're thinking about how many sides the shape has. Line segments are the same as sides. So to count the line segments, we go one, two, three, four. Shape num uh, question number 10 has four line segments. Then we can look at the line segments on number 11. It has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This one has eight line segments or eight sides. When we were talking about area and perimeter and I told you to make lines on each side so that you can count them better, I would suggest doing that as well for these questions. Now let's look at the next one. One, two, three, four. Oh, that one was pretty easy, just going around. And number 13, one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, this one has six. Okay. Now, they want us to go back and think about, about those open and closed shapes. You should be pretty good at them at this point. Look at number 14. Think about it. Is there any spot where this shape is open? Nope, I don't see it, so it has to be closed. What about 15? Oh, look, 15 I'm noticing is that this endpoint and this endpoint, they do not connect, making a whole shape. So that means that it has to be an open shaped. Let's look at 16. Hmm. Well, I noticed that if I started at this endpoint and went all the way around, it would connect. So this shape has to be closed. And then we have this last one, number 17. Hmm. This one has to be closed too. Look, it starts and ends at the same endpoint. Great job, third graders. Let's review our vocabulary one more time before I send you off. A plane shape is a shape that is a flat, has a flat surface. It's formed by points that make curved paths, line segments, or both. So some of the vocabulary that we reviewed today was a point, which is just an exact location on a line. Then we have a line, which is something that's straight and goes on forever. That's what those arrows mean. Then we have endpoints, which are two points on a line segment. It shows you a part of a line. The line segment itself is this whole section. It has two endpoints and a straight line in between. This part stops. It doesn't go on forever. It's only part of the line. Then we have a ray. Remember our ray of sun. It's got one point and then goes on forever in the other direction. That's what those arrows mean. Great job third graders learning today some basic vocabulary for geometry. Now it's your job to go back and complete the written work on today's lesson. Don't forget to email it to Ms. Brown and Ms. Kapuski. Happy learning third graders!